The strategy employed by the state, according to the CP, is tagged Eminent Elders Forum. We have traditional institutions, we have uh, businessmen, we have uh, those people that are maybe retired civil servants, and then, in fact, some members of the community, and in fact, all the stakeholders are involved. What they do is that uh, usually they will meet intermittently. After a meeting, maybe we communicate our problems to them, we interact with them. They will now go back to their various communities, also disseminate the information to them. So the sitting on their members of the public to always make sure that they assist the police with useful information. So that's how we interact with them. The purpose is for them to at least be a sort of bridge between the police and their communities. Uh, members of the public are always entertaining this fear. They always have this fear. They want they give information to the police. Police will disclose their identity and uh, maybe then put their lives in danger. So the essence of uh, actually uh, enlightening my subordinates is for them to desist from that kind of uh, uh, habit because, of course, if information is given, one should treat such information with all amount of confidentiality so that at least the life of that person given the information will not be threatened or will not be in danger. And the leaders of the community say they are in full support of the forum. That eminent people forum, they act as an informant. We cannot hear, we cannot see something, we cannot hear, but they are within the, the locality. So they are, they are our representative. They brought information to us, they brought information to police command. And whenever there's an uh, incident or anything occurred, they will first bring the information to our, our, our room, our office. Then we invite the police command to go and investigate. Then they come out with the report. Finally, we uh, conclude, we finish uh, the thing. The members, uh, members of, the, of the forum include uh, religious leaders, union leaders, uh, the uh, vigilantes, uh, civil defense, and all those, they are posted within each and every ward within the local government. All these people that are there, they are all personal people. And they are there ready to give all these kind of people, that bad people who are living within the society, that will be trusting easily to find that kind of people. And uh, this community, all these eminent people will help and guide the police to do what is ever is supposed to be done. So it's very, very important to all of us, even on behalf of all my old chairmen of the zone, we are very happy with this, uh, uh, this forum, honestly. And we will give our honest and serious for the cooperation, inshallah. Although different parts of the country is faced with various levels of challenges, curbing the clashes between the Fulani herdsmen and farmers, and in some cases attacks on communities, has become a national issue. Many have said that the solution lies in creating ranches, a course championed by the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Aldo Ogbe. According to him, so far, over 12 states have indicated interest to partner on the grazing and irrigation initiatives. This approach seems agreeable to a section of the country. Cattle uh, rearing is a business. And anything that is business concerns the person who is doing that business. I think the best way for government to handle this is for those people who are there in this castle to have their own uh, field where they will rear this their cattle. They should have their own ranches where they should be able to take their cattle to, feed their cattle. And uh, those of us who want to buy, or anybody who want to buy, will go to the ranch. Some other affected states have decided to embrace dialogue and other forms of strategy for quick solution. We believe that this is something that we can resolve through dialogue. We have asked our people to restrain themselves, not to take laws into their hands. We must be law-abiding. The times are abiding very hard. 
the economic problems are there, and that calls for diversification of the economy. And for us in Asarawa and Benue, we are known for agriculture. We must cash in on this. And the only thing that can help us develop agriculture is when we live in peace. So the herdsmen must be supported, but not at the detriment of farmers. For us in this in Benue state, we are adv advocating for ranches. It's making us go back to the drawing board because the population is much more than the land can handle. Not to talk about other exertions like rearing on the same land. So we must find a middle road where we'll be able to solve this problem. But we have already succeeded. The success is Nasara and Benue have resolved and are committed to ensure that peace reigns amongst ourselves. And I think the next level will be where we shall be seen to be working to the, together to fight people that are insurgents that are coming to Nasarawa or Benue. Even in Abia State, which has witnessed the clash, has held meetings with farmers, community leaders and herdsmen operating in the area, and the implementation of the agreement placed at the feet of the police. To call the two sides together, that is the farmers and the Fulanis, the governor just inaugurated uh, the conflict resolution committee to look into the fracas that is always emanating from these two groups. And uh, I'm the chairman of that committee. And how we are going to resolve it is this all important stakeholders meeting. This meeting have brought the two groups together. They have been able to bring out their challenges. They have been able to give us the way forward. So we are going to articulate all their interests together, interests that have been raised we are also here with the traditional rulers, the community leaders in the areas affected. Because so many of the local governments that are affected, also we brought in the divisional police officers. So with the resolution that we have been able to make today, what we intend doing is to make it as a reference point. Other Nigerians are concerned about the devastating impact this may have on the Nigerian nation, if not properly handled and say that part of the responsibility lies with the individuals in the country. Everybody has the right to defend their uh, territory. Do you understand me? Everybody has the right to defend their territory. If, like uh, Ekiti has done now, um, some, other, some other areas too have taken the law to say, okay, you are coming into my area. You cannot come here to destroy our crops. All right. Maybe if they meet with resistance wherever they are going, I don't see why we should only call on the president to do something like this. They are in your territory. Combat them. And then let us now hear Mr. President saying, don't combat them. Maybe if wherever they, they, they have gone to, if, we, if those people also get up and... You know, you won't leave your door open for anybody to come in and, and, and rob you. You have to secure your own territory. So now that people know that they are going about doing this, let everybody be prepared that if they come to around to my area, I'm going to fight. Once they know that the will of the people, you know, is up against them, I think, you know, it will come uh, uh, this... Um, uh, it, it, will score, it will cop the spread. Each part playing its role, whether through ranching or just dialogue, that's the message and proposed solution to this issue of farmers and herdsmen attacks in Nigeria. Let's hear from you. I'm Amy Thompson.